Today's video is going to be about tips and tricks when it comes to running Ethernet cables. This one here is a CAT6 cable, but these tips will help you with all cables from CAT5 all the way up through CAT8. So long story short, this uh, ceiling here started to get put in and then realized we need a couple of Ethernet cables back here. So I've already got one RAN and I'm going to need to run one more over here and I need to run another over there. So this one is actually gonna be the harder run because I've gotta make a couple of turns and I've got to pass through a few feet of sheetrock. So there's a few tools that I would suggest that you have. When it comes to mounting or securing your cables, zip ties are a really good thing to have around, especially if you're in a warehouse setting and you have extremely long runs, you know, want to zip tie about every 15 feet or so. For in homes, these plastic staples made for electrical wires are fantastic for working with ethernet cables as well. Uh, I use these typically in a, a household environment and these in a warehouse or shop environment and kind of a mix in an office environment. It just kind of depends on where I'm running. Uh, you know, if it's already finished, then chances are I'm not going to be able to use this on ceiling joists or studs. But if it's unfinished, these are a great thing to go with. Some other good tools to have around are these fiberglass wire running sticks. These are fantastic because what you can do is go ahead and just screw them together and you've got a longer stick and you can do it in lengths. Some of them come in three foot, four foot, and five foot increments. Uh, size, that's really up to uh, you. I like the short ones just because in houses or tight spaces, they're easier to maneuver than some of the longer ones. However, some of the longer ones can be a little bit more flexible. So it's really personal preference. I've used both, they all work well. So besides a couple of the tools that you need there, you need all your normal stuff, such as the uh, any type of crimpers, cutters, and punch down tools for your ethernet cables. You also need your keystones and your uh, RJ45 plugs as pictured here. And if you're using the staples, obviously you need a hammer. So, you know, your basic tools. You don't need anything too expensive or too fancy to run ethernet cables. Although a fluke tester would be nice, and yes, they do get expensive, but they help you find out where your uh, fail point is if you're having issues with a cable. So one thing that I noticed that beginners do when it comes to running cable or people that just aren't real familiar with it, they think they can just throw an ethernet cable from one end to another end to be done. Uh, you gotta watch out for any electrical wiring. If your electrical wiring is here, you don't wanna run your ethernet cable side by side with it because it's easier to staple or use those staples or zip ties. Uh, Electrical wires can cause interference with Ethernet cables, therefore causing issues with reliability or connection uh, of, to whatever device you're using. So I always suggest minimal six inches away. Some people will suggest as uh, even further away, but really what you need to do is as far as possible. So if you have an electrical wire running here, run this back here. You know, try try to keep it as far as possible. Uh, I understand that in some places that's almost impossible. I've got a few places on this run to get to, from the switch to this spot here. There's a couple of spots where uh, I've got ether, a couple of ethernet cables within three inches of electrical cables. Luckily, it's you know just a short span of space and where they both go in and then they go their separate ways. So that helps for reliability to try to keep them as far away as possible, but that's not always the uh, possibility. I like to leave some excess wherever I run a spot, like if I'm in a warehouse, I try to leave about 10 to 15 feet of cable zip tied and hidden. Uh, the reason is, is in case that cable needs to be moved, whether it's for a new device or the camera or that um, RJ45 keystone, they just need to be moved. That gives you a lot of flexibility for movement, especially in a warehouse. If you only leave you know, a couple extra feet, you're really not doing yourself any good. So I really try to leave about 10 to 15 feet in a warehouse. Now in a home, I don't leave that much. What I like to do is uh, leave about eight inches out of the box for working with. And then I take a couple of feet and I wrap it up and put it in, the, in behind the box. Uh, that way, if it needs to be moved or if there's an issue, I can pull a little out as needed cut the end off and redo a new end and I still have some excess in case that needs to be moved or 
years down the road, it becomes damaged. It can be fixed again without shorting myself cable. If you leave the exact amount that you need at that point, uh, you're kind of screwing yourself for the future. You're not really future proofing, which is something that I do suggest when it comes to running uh, any type of ethernet cable. Always future proof for anything in case it might need to be moved uh, one direction or another or up or down. So just a good tip there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one ready, uh, get it cut off at the end by the switch, and then I'm gonna run another cable side by side with it. I'm gonna use a few staples to secure the cable where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna put the RJ45 keystones on the end of this, which I'll show you how to do. I do have a couple of videos that show you how to put together an RJ45 keystone as well as an RJ45 plug, but I'm gonna update that so that way it has better video and audio quality and I'm gonna include it in this video here so everything's all in one, the tips, tricks, and how-tos. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I'm running this second ethernet cable now. I've already got two sticks put together here. Some sticks have ends on them that make it easier to connect. Most of the time they're just screws that can go on to the next one. So what I do, now it depends on what I'm running through in a warehouse, I do a little bit better tape, uh, a little thicker usually, and also a little bit more, but just a few passes should get the trick done for what I'm doing because I'm just running over HVAC and then over sheetrock in an empty cavity. So um, just a few passes of some light duty painter's tape, no big deal. Uh, I have had to use duct tape before and do like the first foot overkill sometimes, but sometimes needed for pushing through some of the things you might come across in a warehouse. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pass this through. I'm not going to do a video of it. It's really not that interesting. It's just shoving a wire through a cavity. The one thing that I do suggest is be very cautious. If you have to go over something, make sure you run the wire over. I have made that mistake in the past where I had to go back 30 feet, rerun cable because I forgot to go over something. Uh, another trick is careful when you're pulling. You don't want to pull on across any sharp metal. Uh, that could damage the outside of your cable, which depending on the cable that you have, that could damage some of the fire resistance. But also, uh, if you damage the outer jacket, you could potentially damage one of the twisted pairs inside of there. And then you're gonna have a lot of issues when it comes to troubleshooting, why is this cable not working? So always be cautious whenever you are pulling over something metal. Um, try not to if you have to. I've put duct tape over a piece of metal before, put like four or five things of duct tape over it. So that way the cable goes across the duct tape rather than the piece of sharp metal. So definitely be careful when you're running cable like that. And you can always already see that I've got some staples here. Now this is not tight. I've just got it to where I can pop a cable under it and just do that until I get both cables ran. Once I get this second one in there, uh, I'm gonna hammer all that. So another suggestion that I have for tools to have around that's handy is some sort of label printer. Uh, it's great because then you can go, you know, uh, basement living room one or game room one or whatever you want to call your room or office and you can label it as one or two or you can do north, south, east, west, however you want to do it because uh, you've got two here. We can label them back here so that way they're labeled up there. And then we also can label them on the faceplate whenever we put that up. So that way it, it's easier to know what you're looking at when it comes time to uh, troubleshoot. So that way if you know that you need to troubleshoot you know, connection one, you're not going, well, which one is connection one? I think it's this one here. And then you may be troubleshooting connection two the whole time. So I would definitely suggest labeling some way. Even if you don't have a label maker, get a pen or some sort of Sharpie and write on here. So now it's time to go ahead and start putting keystones on the ends of these. All right, so to start this, make sure you got your cutter. I cut about an inch or so, no more than an inch and a quarter. And then I start pulling all the twisted pairs back. And I grab onto the plastic divider in the middle, pull it out as much as I can. Same with the little uh, string there. And then I take and I cut it as close as I can without snipping the ends of the wires. 
or the edges of the wires because you definitely when you cut that double check that you didn't cut any of your wires because if you do cut some of your wires you've got to redo that stuff so now it comes time for the keystone I like to use side B pretty much every company I've worked for has always used the B standard I've not ever had to use the A standard but the good thing with these keystones is that A is on top B is on bottom for both sides so that way you know how to uh, plug in each standard now again I'm using the B standard so just look at the bottom row I can better show you so I usually start with the blue now you want to leave these as tightly twisted as possible it keeps for a better connection I try to set the edge of that in there put those in the best I can with my nails and then I will go to sometimes I don't get them in there very well with my nails so I just go ahead and punch it down I'm gonna use this wall since it's concrete so I made that connection so now I'm gonna to flip to the other side and use green Again, you want to keep these as tightly twisted as possible. Make sure your cutter's on the right side too. You want to cut on the outside, not the inside. I've seen people make that mistake before and it's not, not a good mistake to make. So again, with keeping as tightly twisted as possible, I want to look which wire comes first. And that's going to be the brown white stripe. And then the brown goes second. So I've got it twisted as much as I can inside there until I need to break it. Again, this keeps for a better connection. And now all that's left is orange. So the orange stripe goes first. So then you want to go through, once you get these punched down, you want to make sure that you've got them all the way in there, which I do. So now I'm going to take and go ahead and put this cover on. And this one is done. It's always best to test it, but I don't actually have the other end on, which is the plug that goes into the switch. So uh, I'll have to do that later and I'll test it later as well. So one of them's done. And it's time to put it into its faceplate. So there's that. It's that easy. Now, I haven't labeled these yet. I know I was talking about labeling them. The reason why I haven't labeled it is because I'll label it once I get it, uh, get the RJ45 plug in on at the switch and I'll test it and whichever one I start testing, like this will be number one and this will be number two, but I'll, I'll do that once I get done on the switch side. All right, so it's time to go ahead and do the second one. So since this one was actually the first cable out of the box, doesn't have any cable at the end there and it was bent really tight here so I'm going to actually cut that whole end off just to make sure that there's no damage to the cable back here and now it's time to go ahead and start this one so I'll go ahead and screw this into place after the paint and everything's done with the uh, ceiling here so as you can see, we've got all four cables ran. I only had to run three again because one was actually already ran. So uh, I had three additional cables to do, but as you can see, all four cable runs are done and complete for this room. All that's left is to give you a couple more tips and to go ahead and put the RJ45 plug in on the cables. So one last tip when you're running the cables, be sure do not kink the cable. Always be careful with when you're pulling. Don't get it wrapped up too much because if you have too much excess for a drip loop, which is okay to have a drip loop between uh, points where you're pulling. However, don't get too much there because it starts twisting and it can kink. And when you kink it, you can sometimes damage the copper cables that are inside the Cat 6. And if you're using one of the, the copper clad ones that's aluminum wrapped in copper, those are a little easier to damage. So definitely be careful with your running your cable. And the last thing is 
just to be careful when it comes to cutting for your RJ45 jacks or plugs. When you cut the sleeve, don't cut the cable inside, the twisted pairs. If you do that, you're gonna damage the connection and you're damaging the reliability and the connectivity. So let's go ahead and put that RJ45 plug in on one of the cables and get it plugged into the switch. We're gonna go ahead and do the RJ45 plug on this. As mentioned earlier, we're doing the B standard. That is T-568B. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So need to cut a little bit off here. Just like earlier, need to cut that middle plastic piece out. You can use the cutters that are on these here, or you can use scissors. It's up to you. Sometimes I like scissors for this one, so I feel like I can go ahead and get a little bit closer to that edge without damaging the cables. So now it's time to straighten these out and unlike the keystones, you can untwist them completely back to the jacket or sleeve, whatever you want to call it. In my opinion and experience, the blue and green are easier to straighten out than the orange and brown. Orange seems to be twisted the tightest for some reason. Okay, so the B standard is going to be orange stripe orange, green stripe blue, blue stripe green, brown stripe brown. So let's go ahead, and that's red from left to right, so let's go ahead and get that going. So orange stripe orange, and we've got green stripe blue, blue stripe green, and we have brown stripe brown. Just gonna straighten these out here. This makes it easier to fit into the plug. All right, so again, we've got orange stripe orange, green stripe blue, blue stripe green, brown stripe brown. I usually cut about a half inch out, so I'm gonna put my thumb to keep from cutting it short. Double check before I cut. So now again, like I said, that's red left to right. So orange stripe orange, green stripe blue, blue stripe Blue stripe green, brown stripe brown. Slide those in there. Push in as far as you can. Should be all the way. Get that jacket in there. Then all ends should be visible down here. Or all cables should be visible at the end. So you can verify that you've got, if you look on the back side here, you're gonna verify. Orange stripe orange, green stripe blue, blue stripe green, brown stripe brown. I'm verifying that they're all the way at the end. Now that they are, I'm gonna use the RJ45 crimper. Now it's crimped, shouldn't come off. Now some people will use uh, little jackets right here. I prefer to use jackets for any type of um, like office or warehouse or shop type of work. When it comes to houses, uh, I don't usually use them as often unless requested. I don't do it on my personal house just because I don't feel the need to. Uh, but some people do, they put the jackets on no matter what they do, some people never do. Again, I suggest the jackets right here for any type of shop, warehouse, or office setup for homes, it's personal preference. I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe.